All right, so this is the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to pretty much effectively use the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II for streaming. And that's going to be, if you're gonna be streaming to Kick, Twitch, YouTube, whatever it may be. Did you go with USB or HDMI? Let's talk about it. All right, so before we get into the meat and potatoes, of the video today about the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II using it for streaming. I do wanna go ahead and say, if you find this video informative or helpful in any way, shape or form, please consider leaving a like and a comment and maybe even sharing it. That helps people find this video who are needing to have answers uh, to the questions they have as far as using the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II for streaming. And again, if you find it helpful for you, help somebody else out. And again, that helps me out. And if you want to take it even further, you consider subscribing or joining the channel as far as the memberships go that supports me directly. And if you're interested in any of the accessories that I use for the Sony ZV-E and Mark II to make this streaming process a lot easier, there will be a actual Amazon store page down in the description. And I'm an Amazon associate. That means I get affiliate money if you purchase anything using those links at no cost to you. And that directly supports the channel. With that being said, there are some accessories down there that you are going to need to get this to function correctly. And I will go ahead and point those out through this video. And then you just look for those in that Amazon storefront. With that being said, I've taken up enough of your time. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. And like I said, the capability of this camera with the Yongnu 16 millimeter lens, instead of getting the Sigma lens, because that lens is at like 400 and something dollars, at least at the time of recording. And this one, comes in at 288 at least when i purchased it and the lowest has been on amazon is 230 like six or eight or something like that and they have an 11 millimeter lens that's also like 298 or something like that and obviously they're not going to be on the level or on par as sigma and the sony ones uh respectively but the thing about it is is that if you're a budget content creator and you're looking for cheap lenses and stuff like that and a small compact form like this or wherever and you're looking, like I said, already at a 16 or 11 millimeter lens, why not pick these up? Because even the people that, you know, did a comparison of the 16 to the Sigma 16 and 11 millimeter to the Sony 11 millimeter lens, the only way that you would notice a difference is if you pixel peep, meaning you zoom into the footage or the picture or something like that, you might see a difference in quality, but the quality that's on offer here for a entry level content creator who's streaming or recording a video like this one, you're not going to really know it's a difference. The only thing that you could probably notice is with the 16 millimeters respectively, because the Sigma 16 millimeter is a F 1.4 and this is a F 1.8 meaning that the Sigma is gonna have a little bit of more of a blurry or background the closer that you get the subject to the lens. But like I said, how small this one is, how compact it is, and the price point, I would argue that, yeah, just get an F1.8. It's gonna be perfectly fine for your need. The only thing that I would say that you are going to need it to get is the Ulanzi fan right here, the upgraded one. It's like a $40 purchase or whatever for the accessory. And what it does is it sits on the back of your actual camera, just like so. And all you would need to do is run a USB cable out of this into a USB, uh, you know, outlet or get in one of those little bricks to plug the USB type C cable into to keep it powered because it has an internal battery and obviously it drains over time, but it has a temperature sensor on it. So you will know and streaming with this with the HDMI port and everything like that. I did notice the camera does get a little warm, but that's because in my room, my room gets warm. And as you can see, it's already 84 degrees in here. I've been trying to record this video for hours and I have professional studio lighting, obviously, and everything like that. So the back where the fan displays the actual temperature, I took a picture of it after like four hours of streaming and you can see the temperature or wherever in Celsius, but that was like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. You know what I'm saying? And the room was pretty hot and we we're having heat waves and stuff. It's been 90 degrees plus outside, even though my AC in my house is set to like 68 it still can't really cool off this room because I have a 3080 in my PC. I have all these RGB lights, studio lights, recording and streaming and all that stuff. It's gonna get hot in your space. So just get the Yulanzi fan, put it on the back. You don't have to worry about overheating with HDMI or USB type C. And I've seen too many people asking me in the comments, which one is better overheating this, overheating that. And I say in each video, get the Yulanzi fan, never overheat with the Mark one and the Mark II, both stream and using for more than four hours. 
never had a warning, never had an issue or whatever with either camera, even the Sony ZV-1 having a fan on the back, never had a problem, never had an issue. I don't write scripts for my videos. I take five to six hours to do content creation or wherever, if I'm lucky to get six hours, but I usually take five, a four to five and never had an issue, never turns off. Dummy battery plugged in, running the HDMI signal, you know, stuff on the camera, everything like that, never have an issue. Just get the fan, just get the fan. I have to say that because people just for some reason keep ignoring that and just asking about over, just get the fan for your actual Sony ZV-E10 Mark II streaming setup is just get a good, decent HDMI cable. Again, link in the description, get this USB or HDMI to USB capture card. Again, link in the description. If you do want to make sure that it's 4K 30, the only one that I can actually recommend that I know for a fact is gonna do that is the Elgato one. And again, that's kind of expensive. You're gonna have to get this fan the Yolanzi fan or wherever, you're gonna have to get it to make sure that your camera does not overheat. You're gonna wanna get one of these base plates to be able to take your camera off the bottom of you know the stand or wherever and leave this base plate attached. And you're probably gonna wanna pick up two of these so you can have the base plate on the actual tripod as well as the stand or wherever that's connected to your desk. And you can leave this base plate on your camera and you can just move it back and forth. You don't have to unscrew anything. It just makes it a lot easier. And again, for whatever reason, if you still want to use the USB mode or wherever, I will leave the USB cord that I recommend that's going to allow you to do 4K 30 from this or camera or wherever, because you're going to need a specific type of USB cable. I will have it linked in the description. It's going to be a right angled one, so it won't block the screen of your camera. And I've streamed like three days with it now, all of the times being around four hours. And like I said, through that HDMI port with the Yuanzi fan, never overheated, never had an issue shooting an S-Log3 with the LUT applied through the SD card because you can upload your own custom LUTs into the SD card. And what you do after that is apply them through the menu or wherever. And I'll have the video linked in the description on how I you know, did that. And having the HDMI cord or wherever, having that display that's on your actual display through the HDMI cord uh, going into a USB capture card because you turned off all the information and the text and stuff on the actual display. The only thing that's gonna be displayed to the HDMI capture card is the footage, whatever's in front of the camera in your LUT. So your footage is already color graded. Having that already in there, and depending on if you're shooting S-Log3, HLG3, whatever it is, having those LUTs applied or wherever, because maybe you purchased Paul Leeming's LUTs, which are like $30, and you get access to pretty much all the shooting profiles, like a conversion LUT for all the shooting profiles for Sony, you're gonna be able to have your footage color graded because you're gonna bring that into OBS or your Zoom meetings or whatever. And because the LUTs already applied through this method, your footage is gonna look good. So if you're recording for YouTube, streaming, like I said, to whatever platform, using it for Discord, Zoom, whatever, you're gonna have color graded footage. And yes, you could go into DaVinci Resolve and color grade it a little bit more or apply a different LUT or something like that because the Paul Lehman LUTs are just pretty much conversion LUTs and stuff like that, just to make your footage look a little bit better. They're not the ones that people would go in and fully detail it out and everything like that. So you're probably still gonna have to do a little bit more if that's the way you wanna do things. But like I said, for the average consumer who's going to pick this up and wanting to get something just to look nice and want an easier method to do HLG3 or S-Log3 or any other Sony picture profile, this is the best way and the easiest way to color grade your footage. And like I said, you're not going to be able to do that with the USB Type-C because when you display your information or wherever on the back of the screen and you do the HDMI setting, that doesn't apply to USB Type-C. So even if you're able to, you know, shoot an S-Log3 HLG3 and your footage looks washed out because of the USB Type-C, there's no way to get a actual, I would say, LUT to display over the USB Type-C. So you're better off shooting, you know, in, I would say, a actual like intelligent auto mode or something like that, or a different, you know, profile than trying to use a color picture profile. And the reason why I say that is because the only other method 
is using again obs bringing in that capture uh, source or wherever that video capture source and you can do that obviously because it's usb type c going in but the problem with that is that even if you go into the properties and the filters and obs and you're trying to apply luts you have to manually adjust them and it took me a while to do that with the sony zv e10 mark one what i've done is shoot an hlg3 with the sony zv e10 mark one and i have to go into obs and apply filters and apply those luts and stuff i was talking about and it takes time to perfect it and get it to look this good but once i do it looks good and what i've done on the sigma 60 millimeter lens that's attached to it is put an nd filter that has a uh glow mist filter on top of it so that's why it gives it a little extra glow and that's why my footage looks good but for somebody who's new to this and stuff like that and don't really know what they're looking for and everything like that again i'm still a noob but somebody who's even i would say newer to this process this process with the hdmi signal is going to be vastly superior than trying to use the usb type c method or wherever and color grade your footage that way because your camera is already doing the work for you so why even do more work and like I said, why pay $1,000 just to use the USB Type-C and shoot in intelligent auto mode because you don't know how to color grade and stuff. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And like I said, I understand if you're shooting on a laptop or it's like a quick meeting or something like that and you don't mind using intelligent auto mode for it or whatever. But if you're substantially doing this every single day or very often and you're streaming to Twitch, YouTube, you know, you're recording videos, all that stuff, why not use the capability, the full capability of your thousand dollar camera, especially with this method, especially if you're sitting in your office already and you have the capability of hooking it up to a computer or a laptop, why not get a $10 capture card, get a super cheap, well, somewhat cheap or whatever, depending on the length of the HDMI cable you get, hook it up to the $10 capture card. If you want that 4K footage, and for whatever reason, you can go with the Elgato Cam Link one, but this is $10. Your cable is gonna be very cheap depending on the length. You're gonna spend $40 for the actual fan in the background, uh, for it to go on the back of the camera so it never overheats. You know, having a USB Type-C cable to go to that or wherever, plug it into a wall outlet, surge protector, or power brick, whatever, and then get the Yongnu 16 or 11 millimeter lens under $100, uh, $300, and you will have a killer, not only set up for streaming, but recording YouTube videos and stuff like that. And like I said, with this similar method, only a slightly different with the Mark I of the Sony ZV-10, I've reached YouTube partner. I almost have 1,400 subscribers. I've been doing, you know, product reviews and stuff, working with brands and companies and everything like that. And it's obviously a lot easier and simpler with the Sony ZV-10 Mark II because the footage is already color directed inside. And if I wanted to get a more expensive LUT or I made my own custom LUT, which you can do in DaVinci Resolve and then save it as a cube file or wherever, and let me know if you want to see a video on how to do that in the comments down below. But if you go ahead and do that, you can upload that custom LUT. So you can apply the LUT from Paul Leeming, maybe apply a, another LUT or whatever, a more professional one that you got from somebody else or you made your own, whatever, and then put your camera, whatever you're gonna put your camera or whatever, record a short little video with your lighting perfectly aligned and stuff like that, how your video is going to look, like how this one constantly looks like this for my setup. Just record it into the SD card, bring that footage into DaVinci Resolve and then apply those LUTs, make it to where you want, save it as a cube file, and now take your SD card, upload that LUT to the SD card, put it in here, and now you have all the LUTs and everything that you wanted to apply to your footage on your camera. So you never have to color grade again. Like I said, very simple, easy process. Everything that's relevant that we talked about in the video today will be linked in the Amazon store page down below. And if you want to know some more tips and tricks for the Sony ZV E10 Mark II, then that playlist should be popping on your screen right now. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If this video helped you out, leave a like and a comment, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Enjoy your Sony ZV E10 Mark II.